Hey everybody, welcome to my video on two-part tariffs with two consumers. This was a request from a viewer. They watched my two-part tariff with one consumer and their teacher got mean and gave them two. So I'm doing this one to help you out. So here's our setup. We got a firm with a constant marginal cost of 10. Uh, means its average total cost is also 10, all that stuff. And we've got these two consumers over here. Consumer one, has a demand curve Q equals 100 minus P. Consumer 2 has a demand curve Q equals 200 minus 2P. And there's their graphs. So, let's look a little bit farther into what is happening for each of these entities. The profit for the firm is equal to the quantity it sells, Q1 plus Q2, times its profit per unit, assuming it charges the same Per unit price to both consumers plus the fee charged to consumer one plus the fee charged to consumer two. The consumers each have consumer surplus on the graph. Have you seen graphs like this before? Consumer surplus for consumer one is half times base times times base times height uh, and that comes out to being a half times a hundred minus p squared. Consumer 2 has this consumer surplus. With consumer surplus is half times base times height, which comes out to being 100 minus p squared. All right, so let's look at what we, what we can figure out about two-part tariffs with these three groups. We have case one. We could treat our customers entirely separately, Me, uh, meaning that we charge them different fees to enter the market. Uh, so in this case, we could set the price equal to marginal cost and then charge them both their total consumer surplus. Fee for one is consumer surplus one, fee for two is consumer surplus two. Price is marginal cost, so that's 10, which means Q1 is 100 minus 10 is 90. Consumer surplus, based on that, one, uh, a half times 100 minus 10 squared comes out to 40, 50. Now Q2 is 200 minus two times 10 is 180. Consumer surplus for consumer two is 100 minus 10 squared is 8,100. So profit for firm one in this situation would be the quantity it sells times its profit per unit plus consumer surplus one plus consumer surplus two which comes out to be 90 plus 180 times zero, 10 minus 10 is zero, plus 40, 50, plus 8,100 equals $12,150. Notice, since we have a constant marginal cost and we're setting the price equal to marginal cost, we get zero profit on those first terms. We'll change that later. Now, this would be fine and dandy. It'd be nice for the firm if they can perfectly separate these two consumers and charge them both their consumer surplus, but what if that's not an option? And that's why we're here, because this so far has been pretty easy. What if you have to treat them the same and charge the same fee to both of them? So let's look at three different cases, and I'm going to give you a spoiler. Case two and three are not helpful, but I'm going to are, are not what you want to do. I'm going to show them because I think that the comparison is helpful. Case two would be what if you charge a low fee to both consumers? Namely, what if you set your price equal to marginal cost and you set your fee equal to the consumer surplus of consumer one? Now, consumer surplus one is lower than consumer surplus two, uh, so you're not getting as much money out of your second consumer but you're getting all the money possible out of your first. In this case, profit would be, let's see, uh, instead of adding the CS1 plus the CS2 like before, I'm adding two CS1s, which means 90 plus 180 times zero plus two times 40, 50 equals 8,100. Uh, one quick note, the quantities didn't change because my price is still marginal cost. All right, so there's case two. I can make $8,100. Case three now. What if I charge a high fee 
only capturing the high customer, a high enough fee to drive the low paying customer out of the market. Again, we're gonna keep marginal cost pricing. We're gonna set the fee to equal to consumer surplus two, which means Q1 will go to zero because the fee is greater than his consumer surplus. Profit then looks like this, Q2 times P minus ATC plus CS2, which is 180 times zero plus 8,100 equals 8,100. Uh, those case two profit and case three profits will not always be the same. It's just because of my really simple demand curves. All right, so those are not an impressive way of doing this. We haven't done anything new. We've taken all the same information we had at the beginning and we've just tried to wiggle it around different ways and we see it's not very helpful. What if instead, case four is our good one, we actually do optimal pricing. Here comes the calculus, guys. We're gonna keep both consumers by ensuring that the fee is less than or equal to the minimum consumer surplus. In our case, that's consumer one. Uh, so, and we also know that they're not gonna charge a fee less than they have to. So we're just gonna set the fee equal to the consumer surplus of firm one. Sorry, of consumer one. Which means that profit for firm in case four which we'll call our optimal profit as denoted by that lovely star is equal to Q1 plus Q2 times price minus average total cost plus two CS1. That's 100 minus P, there's your Q1, plus 200 minus 2P, that's your Q2, times price minus 10 plus two times a half times 100 minus p squared. So I've substituted everything in that we know so far, and this whole equation is just a bunch of functions, is just a big function of p now. Uh, some algebra happens, dot, dot, dot. It comes out to being this. Profit is 7,000 minus 130p minus 2p squared. So how do we choose the optimal p? Calculus. Take the derivative of profit with respect to p, you get 130 minus 4p, and then you set that baby equal to zero. There's your first order condition. That finds the peak of your profit function, and that happens when p is equal to $32.50. Okay, so where do we go from here? We've chosen this price. I mean, we did something funky. We built profit as function of p. We optimized it by choosing p. How do we choose f now? Well, plug P into the demand function for consumer two, they're buying 135 units. Plug it into the demand function for consumer one, they're buying 67 and a half units. And since their consumer surplus is the one I'm interested in, I solved for that two, a half times 100 minus 32.5 squared, which is 67.5 squared. So what's the profit equal? Profit is equal to Q1 plus Q2 times P minus ATC plus two CS1. That's 67.5, your Q1, plus 135, that's your Q2, times the price, 32.5, minus the average total cost, which is 10, plus two times one half times 67.5 squared. And when all the dust settles, that's 9,112.5. Now you will see that that is greater than 8,100, which is the profit that we got in case two and case three. This will be better than either of the choosing one customer or the other. Yes, we lost a little bit on consumer two, but our gains on consumer one made it worth it. Uh, let's see. You'll also notice that this is less than case one. Obviously, if we could, charge different fees to the different consumers, that's what you should do. If you're allowed to charge different fees, then this gets very simple. If you're not though, choose case four, which is setting this up as a function of price and choosing the optimal price, and then setting your fee equal to the lower consumer surplus at that price. So I don't know if this was helpful to you. I hope it was, because yeah, this stuff's kind of tricky. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy econing. See you next time.